Hi, it's Chris Watkin here, and I'm with Charlotte Jeffrey Campbell, very well-known estate agency and letting agency trainer in the industry. Uh, Charlotte, where do you think letting and estate agency bosses go wrong with motivating and coaching their millennial staff? Talk to me. I think, well, is it millennials or is it all staff, I suppose, is the question. I suppose the thing you've got to understand is what does it motivate the individual. And we, it's dangerous a little bit saying millennials because... Do you think it's wise to, 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 to label everyone under the no, same? No, I don't. And I think, I think we understand that millennials probably have been um, encouraged a lot and told to strive for their dreams and, and okay. go off and, and, and create this world. But I don't medals know... Medals for eight place. Yes, Participation absolutely. There's medals. No, there's no winners... You know, and I think it's important that there are winners. I think as salespeople, you have to strive to be the best. Um, I think for me, it's all about what is what is your motivation? What motivates you? And I know from working with all sorts of different people in the past and as a trainer, what motivates one person is very different from somebody else. So the millennials, though, I think they like detail. I think they like follow up. I think they like monitoring. I think they like praise. But then who doesn't? So, I mean, I'm, no, I'm not a millennial, she says, slightly depressed, but I'm not a millennial and I like praise. It's interesting, I've had a few people on this sofa here and what they've said is, is that uh, money doesn't motivate no, not compared always. to mm -hmm. 20 years ago when, when we were wet behind yeah. you. I think money still motivates to a degree because that's if you're a salesperson, of course it's going to motivate you, you're going to want to hit targets. But I also think that... I mean, I've rewarded people with time off in the past or okay. finish early on a Friday or sometimes it's something as clear as that well-meaning praise. Yeah. And, and development and training is one of the keys. I think the millennials, and even younger than that now, they expect an opportunity. They expect to look at a path and see what will happen as their career unfolds in front of them. So what would you say to like a 45 to 60-year-old estate agency boss who's mm -hmm. been used to probably working through the Connells or the countrywide machine of yeah. just throw the money and sort it out. Yeah. Do they need to change then? Yeah, I think the appraisal side of your role as a manager is really important. And I think, you know, we as an industry have not always been good at training and development. And I think that that's changing. And I think we know that the industry is going to change this year. There are going to be rules coming in to, to force us to train. But I do question why we don't volunteer to train more often because I think we are truly atrocious we at are we are and no, I don't think we're atrocious I think there's a real mixed bag out there and I think from my point of view um making sure that the staff that you have within you feel valued is one of the most important tools because one of our biggest issues in our industry is turnover and one of our biggest industry issues is attracting good quality staff and I think Part of that is that the millennials don't see this opportunity to develop. They don't see it being badged up in a way. Why? I mean, what? But let's be frank, no one's ever wanted to be an estate agent, even 20 no, years ago. No, but you are strangely addicted to it when you start, aren't you? You well, start it, out and then you don't get out. You know, I tried to have a proper job at one point selling radio advertising and hated every minute of it and got back into training. You train and coach an awful lot of estate agency bosses. Mm -hmm. Don't mention names, but what does good look like? Good look. So What's impressed for the, you? So for me, that my, my training role, I'm very passionate about the guy at the front office who is really wanting to do a good job and needs good tools to support them. And I think my role within a manager is to help them achieve that and to take the pressure off them. So for me, good looks like somebody has very clear goals. They know where the business is going. What a lot, a lot of the time we create a mission statement, and that sounds a bit American jargon, but understanding what your business ethos is, I think is really important for all members of your team. And as you say, not everybody's motivated by the same thing. So yeah. delivering excellent customer service might yeah. motivate somebody in particular. I mean, what gets in the way of bosses making these changes? It can't be just money. No, I think historically there's 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 been lack of choice in the training market. And I think training historically has been you've got to go out of the office, you've got to go off and learn, or, and, you know, you've got a day out. Uh, or, you know, and a lot of trainers do work with their clients like you do on an ongoing period, but it's spasmodic. It's not, it's not Yeah, because I've always found it strange that the bosses never go on the training anyway. So when they go on the training yeah. and then come back and say, Charlotte's told us to do this, yeah. Yeah. so oh, we don't do it that way, or yeah. there's no follow-up. Yeah, and I think that's one of the most important things about training. And it's part of why we introduced our e-learning, because actually everyone learns at a different pace as well. Everyone has different styles. Some people are quite happy to sit and read a manual and, and a book, 
but other somebody else might need to watch something on the telly and and absorb it via a YouTube video. So everything's very different. So you need flexibility in training and I think that's historically what we haven't had in the industry we're all going out on an away day and the risk of an away day is we've all had a jolly good day but yeah. nothing happens afterwards and there needs to be that monitoring and relationship and the staff need to be held accountable and I think one of the faults going back to your really question with the managers is they don't often hold the staff accountable enough I don't know that there's enough monitoring a lot of what we do in our training is create killer questions and it's lovely. We have, they all create their own. They all come out of the business with these great questions. But if nobody monitors them being asked and the notes being put on the system really, really well, what's the point of the training? Mm. And I'm quite a one for keeping in touch mm. with my clients and saying, how are your questions going? You know, Because questions lead to information which makes selling easy. I'm a well, great believer of making life easy. Statements get judged, <laughs> questions get answered, don't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So really, the issue is not millennials, it's their bosses. I think it's... I think it's is it their bosses? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I am going to hang my hat on that. Uh, I think absolutely it's the managers and that's managers at all different levels. And I think if monitoring is done well and effectively, mm. then your millennials are perhaps better supported mm. in a way that they need to be supported and that becomes praise. You know, there's nothing better than hitting your targets. Yeah. But quite often when I deal with agents, there aren't targets, which astounds me still as, a let, as an existential Well, we're in a agent. sales interest, are Yeah, we? yeah. But I also understand about customer service. We've got to reward and recognise in different ways, perhaps. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome.